Do you find networking intimidating as an interior designer? You're not alone and it's okay to feel this way. Have you considered the impact of conversations with the other industry professionals and how they really can propel your firm forward? Social media networking, should we as interior designers pursue connections here or do we have to press the flesh? Well, I am honored to dive into these questions and more with Luann Nagara. Luann is a celebrated media personality, keynote speaker, and seasoned entrepreneur. Recognized as the go-to keynote speaker for leaders and entrepreneurs to launch their life and get out of their own way, she always delivers a dynamic presentation. In her third business launch, Luann Nagara Inc., she provides business resources for entrepreneurs through live events in Luann University. Luann has published three books, is a sought after columnist, and has captured international attention for her weekly podcasts, Window Treatments for Profits, and a well designed business with over 1,000 episodes and 8 million downloads. Luann, welcome to the show. Hey, Katie, how are you? So happy oh to be gosh, here with you. Oh my gosh, I feel you. like it's the first day of school and I'm a little kid in kindergarten. I'm like, Luann's coming on the show. Luann's coming on the show. <laughs> this is so exciting because anyone who's been in design for any length of time and has looked to the experts and the leaders and the people having the conversation in the industry are like, we don't even like talk about the Nagara part anymore. It's like, well, Luann, you know, Luann. <laughs> <laughs> We're on a first name basis with Luann, whether you have ever even met her or not. And well, that says a lot about your personality because you're so kind to everyone oh. you meet. And that's why we're so excited that you're here. Well, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. I don't often get to be on other people's podcasts. So I'm this a is super exciting. Reversal. We feel the exact same way. <laughs> and well, and it was funny how we ended up having the conversation. We were talking, obviously, before we came on about just the power of hiring people smarter than you, finding the best people standing on their shoulders. You find the best, best people. And really, I want to hone in on networking for this conversation and this industry. Okay. Networking okay. is such a huge thing in any industry, but I feel like especially in ours, and especially after COVID, because sometimes people don't want to come out of their shell, um, but like, it's mm. so critical, so important. Like when you look back at your career, was there one moment where you met someone or you had a, a moment where you went, oh, I'm so glad I showed up to this event. I didn't want to come, but it was a game changer. And it just like turned window works yeah, or yeah, your yeah. podcast or whatnot on its heels. Yeah, I have to say there's been, dozens of moments like that absolutely whether it was meeting a potential client that turned into be a lifeline for a decade client doing their house their kids house and their grandkids house you know because you should as you said showed mm -hmm. up for an event I could also remember you know one time showing up at an event in the early days and there was a Hunter Douglas uh, oh. VP there and you know we we hit it off and for whatever reason throughout the years he would just reach out every once every 18 months or something and i can one of the significant things i can remember him reaching out um gosh what would it have been what year i mean when i think about it my daughter graduated college in 2007 so she i mean high school so she was probably in high school or middle school maybe middle school and i remember him saying are you guys building an email list and i was like what is an email yeah. list and why do yeah. i need it and you're talking about like 2002, 2005. Which feels like you know yesterday I mean? for and so many of us. Yeah, a little bit. Kind yep. of, right? But, I, and I can just remember him saying, this is going to be a valuable component mm -hmm. of marketing down the line. And he said, ultimately, when you and Vin want to sell the business, now it turned out we sold it to our daughter and our son-in-law, so it didn't matter. But if we were going to a stranger and we started with zero and he would call every six, eight months, he'd be like, how many on the email list now? And I'm like, 200. And he's like, okay, keep going. Like, like it's just, and then, you know, what do we have now? 10,000, you know, on the email list, you know, and that's still not a super huge email list, but it's not an influencer company sure. either. It's a retail consumer but company. But that's not shabby, you know? let's be honest. I mean, that's, no, that's insane. No, no, but you're talking 20 years sure. building it too. The thing is, I did not understand the, the value mm. of it into mm. the future. And he, so there was just, there's been lots of moments to your point, Katie, that, you know, you showed up at something, you met somebody and 
they just kind of turned a trajectory in a way you looked at things or introduced you to another person and the next thing you know you had an opportunity or something happened it, it's you have to you have to put yourself out there you have to be willing to go and make the relationships I well think, and you hit on I, what I love in that story is the kindness he showed you the fact that he didn't just say oh you should mm -hmm. build an email list he followed up with you and tracked you down How's that email list coming? How's that email list coming? Like we all need people yep. like that in our lives. And that's like so incredibly kind. So true. You also alluded to the intimidation factor that sometimes comes with networking. It's like, oh, I don't want to go and put myself out there. It's like dating, right? <laughs> like fear of rejection. Yes. How do you tell a young designer, someone's just starting their firm, it's okay to feel that way. Or as I tell my kids, it's okay to be scared. Oh. Do it anyway. Do it scared. I mean, yes. Yes, 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 I agree. And the thing is, what's funny is we often consider the introverted mm. person and how it's hard to show up yeah. in a room of people you don't know and suffer over small <laughs> talk. Suffer some I mean, perfect word. I get it, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, but the thing is, you know, I'm extroverted, as extroverted as they come. And I'm not running off with bells and whistles either to get there. You know what I mean? The only difference is once I'm there, I'm plugged in, I'm going to go. I'm going to make saying? the most of it. But yeah. Yeah, and I think for me what I've learned is I don't go and do small talk. Like if you meet me at an event and you say, hi, oh, Luann, I listened to your show and this and that, and I took your Luann University class, I'm going to look at you and I'm going to say, tell me your name. Then I'm going to pull your badge and I'm going to look and go, oh, you're in Colorado. And then I'm going to say your name again. And then I'm going to say, tell me about your business. How many years are you in business? Do you pay yourself? You know, do you, what's your biggest challenge? Like, and then what happens is when I see you again, I'll be like, oh my goodness, we met at the Schwartz Design Showroom in Connecticut. You were like, you had two babies and you were struggling because you were trying to decide if you should hire an assistant. Like, that's the thing. If you go and just do small talk, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> For everybody. Yes. <laughs> you know, but you're in charge of making it more meaningful. That's up to I you. I absolutely love that because you're walking away not only with key data points, but memorable data points. It actually turns into something yeah. that you have a long-term relationship you can base it on. It's joyful then. It's actually fun and you well, met and somebody. I, I think too, you know? a lot of times you go to those events and you end up talking to someone and you're like, this has nothing to do with why I'm here. You're not the person I'm supposed to be talking to. Why am I talking to you? And now, fast forward to like middle age, I'm like, you're here for a reason. Some reason somehow I was supposed to talk to you and I have to just figure out why now. And it usually pops yeah. up in the most random places or times that you're like, right. who would have ever thought? But they're the best leads or they know someone or yes. it always shocks me just the power of talking to people. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, what I've learned is if you go in with an open yes. heart and you realize that sometimes you are sent in the path of mm. that person, not every interaction is going to be what you're right. going to get out of it. Sometimes you're meant to say the one thing that changed their mind. You're having a regular conversation. You're not necessarily saying anything earth shattering. Right. You're just, but the, the thing, it's so funny. Can I tell you a story that do happened? It, please do. Okay. So I, we had our Power Talk Friday event at High Point in October of 2022. And yeah. this is on my docu-series, this actual, like, this happening in real life. So you can go to our, you know, website, our YouTube or Instagram and find the docu-series, however you do those things. That's above my oh, pay yeah. grade. If you give it right? to us, we'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, this thank is you. going to be great. Thank yeah. you. But the thing is, we now we all know who Megan Moulton is, right? Big star in the For industry, sure. right? Yep. Megan started listening to my podcast. She told it on the show when she was like a pharmaceutical rep, I think is what she was. She was an on the road rep and she would listen and listen and listen. And finally, she was like, I'm doing it. I'm leaving the, this industry. She sold her house, quit her boyfriend, moved to a different state and like opened up a design business, right? And so now yeah. that's like years ago. Now go to last October. We were at Power Talk Friday, which is a one-day coaching event that I do for designers and window treatment professionals. We get together 8.30 in the morning. We're there at 11 o'clock at night. And awesome. we stop the business at 5.30. We take a break at 7 o'clock. We come back for celebration dinner. There were 24 designers at this event. And it's it's a lot. We're working hard. Our heads are, are down and blah, 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 right? And at, when we come back for dinner, I ask every single person to take a moment 
to share with the group an aha moment or a moment of gratitude for something that they got during the day. And it could be anything. It could be anything, whatever feels that's on your mind and your soul, right? So we've spent from 8.30 to 5.30 together. We've now had an hour of cocktail party together, and now we're doing the aha gratitude moments. When it's, it's getting real. When, yeah, and when it's Megan's time to say her gratitude moment, her aha, she says, and she turns around and she looks at a woman that's sitting there at like two tables away, and she said, I have a moment of gratitude that I want to share. She goes, you don't remember me. And she looks at this woman who's a designer in Connecticut, big business, but she's not a known name, not a Megan Moulton. And she looks at her and she said, you probably don't remember me. She said, but when I started my design business, the, fir- one of the, fir- the first time I came to High Point, she goes, I was terrified. I didn't know totally. anybody. I didn't know anything. And she said, and I happened to sit down next to you. And the other designer starts screaming, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, was that you? And she's saying, I asked you a question, and you took 20 minutes out of your life to just talk to me and tell me that I could do it, that I deserve to be a designer, that I had a reason for doing this and to just keep working, that it wouldn't always feel scary like this. And you're just like, it was the most. And so that's when I say, like, maybe you're having a conversation that you're like, yeah, this isn't really, I'm not really learning anything, but the impact. And and Megan said, do you know how many times when things got hard that I thought back to that conversation with you and there you were, a seasoned 15-year, 20-year designer telling me, I, I belong here. Don't feel like I don't. Don't feel imposter syndrome. You have a business. You have a right to be here. And so that's the thing. You don't know is- the impact you're having. That is beyond breathtaking. And just the fact that it was so memorable that many years later changed yeah. the entire trajectory. Yeah, it was crazy. It was like five years ago. And here, the other designer, Michelle Harris, who's an outstanding business lady, rock star, multiple yeah. billion dollar business, you know, spent the entire day and never connected that Megan Moulton was this little girl five years before that she was like, you know, helping her and building her up and giving her a high five. You got this kit to Luca. You can do it. <laughs> I love that because I also think it speaks to our industry and that right. people find the good people. If you haven't found the good people, there's always a couple bad apples in every bunch. Let it go. Like, like you said, move on. That's because it. I think 95% of our industry is filled with amazing humans that yeah. want to show up and help. They're good eggs. Yeah. They want to show up and they want to help other people and they really do care. Yeah. And yeah. that's, you know, it's such an interesting perspective on networking to flip it the other way too, of like, what can you give in a networking? And sometimes it's not even what you say. Sometimes it's just listening. That's not right. even saying 100%. two words. Some of the best clients we have got when I really haven't always been truthfully fully engaged, right? I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I'm not going to try to sell you on really anything. We're just going to kind of sit here and I'm like, tell me, how's it going? How's business? What challenges are you facing? Right. Like best conversation. I'm like, I have no idea how. That's <laughs> it. That's all it. I did was listen I was to exhausted you. and tired and trying to stay there. <laughs> right? And just yeah. listening. And you thought that was the most remarkable thing in the entire world. Yeah. Um, when it comes to networking for designers, specifically for interior design, what do you see as being the most powerful tools? Because there's a kajillion of them, especially after COVID. We've got all the technological tools. What do you think has the greatest ROI for especially beginning designers, those starting their firm? Where would you say start here? It's going to pay you the highest dividends. Where do you dig your trenches, so to speak? I mean, look, any opportunity you can take to be in person, right? So whether Mm. it's attending a Power Talk Friday, if it's attending IDS conference or your local ASID chapter, um, it's, it's the easiest way to... In a non-aggressive, non-confrontational, like non-pressure way, like if you join IDS or ASID or WCAA, the Window Covering Association of America, and you just become an active participant and- There's no expectation on you. You're donating your time and your energy and your superpowers to the better of the whole group. And what happens is 
you know, like feathers will find each other. Like, you know what I mean? Like the kind of person that you gel with will gravitate to you. Um, and then beyond that, you know, when you're ready for coaching, right? Yeah. Like, and, and, and when I say ready, like the day you open a business, you're ready for coaching. It's just a matter of if you have the mindset to invest in yourself. Do you believe you're worth it? Because day one, you're ready. I have a lot of people totally. that say to me, oh, when should I, should I wait till my business two years or four years? And I'm like, I don't know. Did you stick your kid on the baseball field with a bat with no coach, no team, no players and say, well, after two years of trying it every which way yourself, then we'll come out and show you really how to play, Billy. <laughs> I mean, it's like insanity. That's such a great analogy. Like, it's like insane. <laughs> but no, let's put our mortgage on the line. Let's put our business on the line. Let's quit our full-time job. And let's just see if it works out for us. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's insane. So, right. but there's a lot of times, whether it's with Michelle Lynn or it's Nancy Ganskoffer or it's Michelle Williams or Tracy Connell or any of these women, a lot of times their coaching has the group component. And so... Yeah. You are meeting by Zoom, but you're still feeling each other out and meeting each other. And then a lot of them, Sandra Funk also, will have the meetups at High Point. Yep. Or a lot of these coaches will have their own retreats with their own groups. So, yep. I, I, I mean, I just, however you get there, get there. That's all I'm Isn't saying. Isn't it the truth? Well, and it goes back. There's a whole industry waiting to embrace you. It's just, yeah. do you want to be embraced? Do you want, like, do you want to show up for it? Because it will happen. Yeah. And I think you, you hit on a key nugget too of like, just, just go to ASID, IDS, get on a committee. Yes. You know, I mean, I hate to say that it's kind of like dating, but it really is like get running and see who shows up next to you. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. And the thing is, it's the same as the networking philosophy. Like I'm not worried, you know, don't go in focused on what I'm going to get out of it. Just go in and yeah. focus and be a real human, share, ask questions, genuinely show interest in somebody. And sometimes you get the aha moment and sometimes you give the aha moment. Right. But it's the same mm. with the, with the organizations. It's yes, we understand the big why is I'm joining so that I can better myself in my business. But the day to day boots on the ground is what can I do to better this organization? Because when you go to it with that frame of mind and you're not tracking tally, oh, that's two meetings and no friends yet. That's three meetings and no referrals yet. Well, then, I mean, if you're going to keep score, like, I don't know, join a basketball team. Don't open a business. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> well, I so agree because that's just focusing on the tangibles. The reality is we're 70% we're water, or I love your term, guard variety human beings, right? <laughs> like everyone just wants to feel seen, safe, heard and cared about just show up and be kind yeah sometimes I feel like we make it very complicated networking like it's just here's 101 best ways and there's so many books written about it and where do you go and it's just like hi look me yeah. in the whites of my eyes and be like hi how sincerely are you mm -hmm. like how yeah. really is your business going right. and this is a safe place to say it is sucking <laughs> 2024 has been a horrible year or we're killing it. And I don't even know how to keep up, you right, know? Right. And the other thing too is, I mean, we say it all the time, but it is so true. Mm. The other person is not thinking about you and judging you. They're too worried about judging themselves. Like, great tip. I mean, honestly, when you walk yeah. up to somebody like, I get it if you're especially if you don't know anybody you have um, you know lean towards introversion and you feel uncomfortable and awkward walking up and saying hi but when's the last time you went to a networking event and someone came up and said hello to you and you were like are you kidding me right now you <laughs> actually what are you what's going on in your brain. You know, I mean, we're not sitting at home in our living room and somebody knocking on the door going, let's talk. You know what I'm saying? So, like, be the one to say, hey, I don't know anybody here. Do you? <laughs> like, it's uh -huh. like, it's you're the lifesaver now. Yeah. All of a sudden you're showing up for them. You're thinking how you can put them at ease yeah. and how. Yeah, that's a great. Yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. tip. I mean, literally, they're going to look at yeah. you and go. Don't talk to me. I'm here to be in this room with a thousand people by myself. <laughs> <laughs> wrong day, wrong life decision for you. <laughs> yeah. I was sure hoping that I would stand in this corner all by myself. Thanks. Sorry. Go away. No. You're nervous and you feel uncomfortable uh, being alone. Then look at somebody. Meet eyes. Smile. Say, hey, I'm from Jersey. Where are you from? You know what I'm saying? By the way, I have to tell you, I, 
I'm getting a very soft spot in my heart for Jersey. <laughs> my kids have a new head of school who's from Jersey. I am so in love with the Jersey personality <laughs> right now. It is large. It is in charge. It is direct and it is unapologetic. And I am here for every single part of it. We get I stuff done, it. Katie. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Which I am so there for. I'm like, don't underestimate the size of New Jersey or the people that live in it, folks. <laughs> You're just going to lose. I'm just going to tell this you. This is true. <laughs> Flipping it around, what mistakes do you feel like people make when it does come to networking besides thinking about themselves and what they're going to get out of it? And as you say, keeping score, go play a sport. What else yeah. do you see that a lot of people miss when it comes to networking? That you're like, oh, we were so close and we just missed it. Yeah. I mean, beyond those, right? Underestimating yeah. the other person could use you that day and not getting focused in your head is, you know... All of that. That's the, all the boots on the ground networking, right? Then right. the next mistake that we can make is not following up, not mm. keeping the relationship going, not, yeah. you know, checking back in. Like if you did meet somebody and, you know, they were having a pain point that they were telling you about, like check in with them, text, DM, email a couple weeks later, how you doing? Thinking about you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, you know... Uh, they said that they might have an opportunity for you. Well, you know, follow up. How did, you know, is there an opportunity there? Or how about if you met somebody and you hit it off with them and you now, like that was in KBiz, like in February and you're going to High Point, how about you just text them or email them or DM them and say, are you going to High Point? Like, that was fun, you know, talking with you. Maybe we could meet up at High Point. Like, it's now totally. taking the relationship to the next level. If there's synergy with the two of yeah. you, like, you don't, listen, we're humans. We're not going to get along with everybody. There's some people True. we're going to be at a networking party and we're just like, sweet Jesus, I hope you're getting what you need from this because I don't ever want to have to have this conversation again. I've like, never I get it. that way, Luann, ever. I've never had that feeling. You know, there's feeling. just some people you don't gel with, right? I'm sure totally. when I go like and meet people in real life, they're like, oh my God, she's so extra. Like, no. You know what I mean? Like, no. Let's just go back to listening to her on the podcast. Real life is just too intense, right? So no, They just haven't fallen in love with Jersey yet. It'll happen. You know, so my thing is, I'm not saying for something that's not there. I'm right. I'm not saying for because because that's silliness, right? If you right. didn't feel that jive, that connection, but when yeah. you have, don't underestimate that it does mm. need to be nurtured. You know that yeah. you have to reach yeah. out and you know, hey, I thought of an opportunity that might be good, or I saw this Zoom. It's a free Zoom. My Doma Studio is giving a free Zoom, and they're going to have you know X Y Z business coach there. This is the topic you were telling me that you were trying to solve. Boom. Yeah. Here's you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, I totally do. I think it's a brilliant, and just also it comes back to that general sense of care. Yeah. When you are caring for someone and you actually care about who they are, those things will intuitively come to you. In middle age, they come to me at about 2 a.m. during the right. middle of the night insomnia, <laughs> which happens regularly. And then I have brilliant brainstorms. But the reality is that it's floating through your brain because you actually did have that connection yeah. with someone. Yeah. And you actually do care. And you do want them to succeed, which is yeah. a huge, 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 yeah. huge thing. Yeah. Talk to me about social media and networking. You know, I love what you said about in person. Is social media authentic? Like, can you authentically network? I know. I'm glad to see you just kind of roll your eyes and shrug your shoulders. And for any of you who are listening snort. and not watching, and snort and just be like, yeah, whatever. Uh, War of 1812 called. It wants the social media back because it doesn't really work. I mean, that's kind of like, well, it's nice to see you react that way because sometimes I feel that way. I'm like, it's cute and it's kitschy, but are we really making a connection? I mean, yeah. You know, what I know is my own personal biases aside, I okay. do know that if it feels like, if it's comfortable for you and it's a platform that you like to spend time on, I do know, like, you know, there's a designer thread that I'm in on Instagram. Yeah. Now, they put me in it, I don't know, after one of our events or something, and so they asked me would I be in it, and it's all women that I love, and so, of course, I said yes. But, like... For sure. 98% of it is, I can't find this sofa. I don't know where that is, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and of course, it's a tremendous support for each other. And, yeah. but I'm not in the weeds on it. And I, my thing is, it's not my place to go connect. So what mm -hmm. I'm saying to you, Katie, is, I would not discount it as a valuable place because I have watched these women, this particular group of women, support each other 
in this group thread. You know, a cust- okay. you know, a client is like driving one of them to drink and the others will rally, give them ideas, how to support, you know, what to do. And, you know, sometimes just say, man, you know, that stinks. Right. It sucks. So, yeah. Right. It's it's not my preferred platform. You know, mm-hmm. I get annoyed actually when people this is my pet peeve on on instagram let's hear it here it is oh this looks great what you're doing i love your podcast it's so good i have a great idea for a show would you like to hear it yes on my website where it says submit to be on podcast that's where i'd like to hear it that's exactly (laughs) where i'd like to hear that's why i built it that's why the form is there that's why the process is there that's exactly right (laughs) like but you know it's never a designer it's always a pr rep for a designer or some blasted other thing you know what i'm saying and so i do it's just and if you were really watching the show you would know that i have a form on my website because you would have into my website exactly yes. or yes. there's nine thousand rug people that are like see that you're a beautiful designer like we have a rug line i'm like hmm but actually i'm not a beautiful designer i'm not any of those things and i don't <laughs> want a rug line <laughs> just follow my body in the rug and throw it in the river i do yeah. not want a rug line <laughs> so so my thing is is the contrast what i'm saying is this particular group of women are truly yes. using this as a valuable means of support for themselves. The same in the designer Facebook groups. But when yep. it's bull crap in plain English, when you're coming yeah. into my DM in a bull crap, inauthentic, disingenuine way, and you think just because it's a private message, I'm going down the rabbit hole with you, you're out of your mind. No. I totally agree with yeah. you. Well, I think it'd be interesting, too, focusing on this group on Instagram, how many of them had pre-existing relationships and then got on DM for expediency? Kind of like a Marco Polo situation, yes, yes, yes. right? In other words, I believe they all met at Luann Live yeah. 2019 and 2021, and then they were like, let's keep it going. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's, like, the most valuable thing. I'm glad to hear that, like, I think it can, it can feed the beast, so to speak, but you got to start with the core ingredients, which is pressing the flesh, breaking bread, looking in the whites of each other's eyes and being like, how can I help you? Well, and I will also tell you together. And I will also tell you, like, I just had an incident. I was in Dallas for the last 12 days for three different events, a Power Talk Friday, the International Window Covering Expo and my exciting windows conference. Right. So I was there from the 4th to the 15th of April. And I hope you rented a house. No, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, when you say it, I, it does not have to start with in person because when an individual designer comes into my DM and is a human, you see, this mm. is the criteria for me. You are an actual human with a genuine need or request to connect with. You know, you want to be on my show, follow the process. I I mean, come on, right? You want to advertise to me, follow the process. But I will get DMs from designers that will say, hey, I just listened to that podcast episode today. That was so me, that that pain point, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, you spoke to me, right? Mm. So take this fast forward. I'm at the booth at the trade show last week and this young woman walks up to me and she's like, my name's Amanda, and she said, we were just in DM, and you, I told you I was coming to Dallas, and you said to introduce yourself, myself to you. Here I am. And Amanda wow. and I have been going back on DM maybe two or three times, but since 2016. And so, mm-hmm. and we've never met. And so now we have 20 minutes. Hey, how are you? And now I say to her, stay in touch with me. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. I think the criteria isn't so much the platform. It's sure. it's the same as networking. Are you yeah. showing up to get something or are you showing up to give something? Yeah. No, I think that's so well said. That's like the nugget right there. I think when you approach it that way, be the problem solver. And sometimes it's not just tangible problems. It's the person who's just scared to be there. Like, I don't know. I love your line. I don't know anybody in here. Do you? I mean, who who isn't going to be able to relate to that at a networking event, right? Right. And if you'd like, for instance, example, if you're, if you don't know who I am and you were to do that line to me and you were to say, oh, this is crazy. I'm at this event. I've never been to this event before. I don't know anybody. Do you? I'm going to turn around and look at you and go, oh, 
I know practically everybody. Where are you located? What kind of business model do you have? Who do you need? What do you want? And then I'm going to scan the room for eyeballs, and I'm going to bring you to somebody. I'm going to like, this is how Sarah Brennan and Natasha Jones became designer besties for the last six years and side by side leaned on each other and built their business together. Because I was like, you come with me and you come with me. You two are both in business. Six months, you can help each other. You're in Wisconsin. You're in North Carolina. You are now friends. Go forth and do it. <laughs> so about that prearranged wedding thing? No, we're just doing prearranged firms. <laughs> like, these are your people. You don't know you're each other's people yet, but you're that's each other's it. people, and you're going to love life together. But look at the powerhouse synergy that's come out of that. Mm-hmm. And you know what I love about that? Because you won't point it out, but I will. That you took the time to see each of them for who they were. Mm-hmm. And not just what they were doing, but who they were as people mm-hmm. and those intangibles. And then you noted it. You perseverated on it. They show up in the same room and you're like, hey, I, I got somebody for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, should yeah. chat. Yeah, yeah. I think that's so cool. Yeah. No, that's it's. That's a beyond amazing. It is. It's, I love connecting people. Um, you know, I just had another designer that I met like, oh my God, like four or five years ago in yeah. Boston and, or Maine it was. Portland is Portland in Maine. Yeah. Portland. Yeah. And. Um, if you're not on the other coast. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. And. I hadn't seen her in a long time and she reached out like a month ago and she's like, I'm actually going to High Point for the first time. Are you going to be there? And of course, this past, you know, April 2024 was the first High Point other than COVID that I hadn't been to in eight years because I was locked in Dallas. And I said to her, you've never been. And she said, no. I said, do you have a plan? Like we're texting. Oh, you like, do you have a plan? plan? Do you yeah. have a bestie? Do you have a this? She's like, well, I have one person I'm going to hang out. I'm like, no, no, no. I got to get you people. I got to get you people. You know what I mean? So now I'm like texting different people. We're going to for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm texting different people. And my, as a matter of fact, Natasha Jones was my first choice. And what was interesting was Natasha wasn't going. And so then I saw Sarah in Dallas. And Sarah's like, tell her me. I'm like, you're too busy in High Point. I need somebody that can like do it with her. Like you send your Nurture. team out on a mission i'm like no and then she suggested somebody to me i said but who am i going to put her with i need somebody good you know and to me like i'm looking like the synergy of the personality like the kind of person because if it's too quiet people if it's too you know i got the world by the balls people like you know what i'm saying and so i so do yeah and like i want them to have some synergy and so sarah made a good recommendation i reached out you know, Katie was like, I'm going. I'm like, great. Here you are. <laughs> you know? And another match made in heaven. That's it. That's it. Um, that needs to be your whole new second docuseries. <laughs> Finding your perfect business partner. Because it's so valuable. It really is to have somebody that you can run side by side with, especially when you're on opposite coast, you're in opposite markets. You're not yes. competing against each other. No. Why not get after it? Yeah. What is the one thing we're missing on this topic that you feel most often goes overlooked that you're like, this is the one nugget. <laughs> that we haven't hit on I just want to and if we if we hit them all awesome no I I mean we have hit a lot of them right I think the thing that I would say is do not underestimate the power of the relationships to move the needle forward in your business you know do not underestimate that you will look back 5, 10, 20, 30 years in business, and you will mark the moments as you first started the podcast with Katie of can you look back and mark the moments when meeting something was a pivotal thing? And it, it look, we're a world of humans. What you think yeah. the pivotal thing is reading something in AD for your business? No, I'm sorry, it's not. Like it's not, it's, it's, it's a moment of inspiration. It's a moment sure. of I'm a designer too. This is my profession. I'm so proud of this, but the sure. needle moving stuff yeah. is the relationships that you build above you at peer level and below you. You need to get from people ahead of you. You need to collaborate with people at your level to like, you know, figure out the waters that you're in and you need to give to the people coming up behind you. And when you are doing all of that on the daily, the, you know, the whole kumbaya thing is happening in a nice (laughs) circle for you. (laughs) And it's more joyful. It's more joyful. Well, I think it is so much more fun because you're giving those people above you a chance to feel like they're nurturing. 
you're helping your peer group and there's nothing better, which is why I love coaching and I love teaching and I love having this webcast is to like also say to the people coming up, like, Hey, here's how you can do it better. You don't have to make the mistakes I did. Don't, don't do that. Like <laughs> there's a better way. I'll save you the effort now. Right? Like that's the most beautiful gift I think to give anyone. I would have killed for this. Like we were talking about before we came on air that, you know, 20 years ago there wasn't, it was a pod. What? No one knew what yeah. podcasting was or webcasting. It was like the YouTubes. Like yeah. nobody knew about that. Right. <laughs> and so now there's all these resources and people who want to show up and help, yeah. but yeah, show up in person. Don't be afraid to do that or send the sincere DM yeah. so that you yes. can show that you're a garden variety human, exactly. just like all the rest of us. Exactly. I love it. Luann, great conversation. Thank you so much uh, for your time. You're a treasure. Thank you, sweetie. Thank Appreciate you from the bottom it. of our heart. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Hey everybody, welcome to the coaching corner. I'm so glad that you're here. And I just wanted to share my first and one of my most intimidating networking experiences when I was just starting out. I remember going into our local paint store and there was a gentleman behind the counter and he's like, well, a bunch of us painters get together and we go out and we grab a couple drinks and you're welcome to join us. And I thought, I get it. We're in the same industry, but like, I don't know if I really want to do that. And, uh, beyond intimidated to put it mildly, but I decided, okay, I'm going to put on my big girl panties. I'm going to take this for a test drive. And I showed up and it was all these painters from every walk of life in jeans. And we were at a bar I would never have gone to on my own. Long story short, fast forward, a year or so, they would get together every single week or two, and I'd join them about twice a month. They ended up giving me more business than I could handle. They were the nicest, kindest guys who wanted a colorist to come in and help their clients, and it truly was a win-win. And not only that, they really became friends. It was awesome to see how I could share things with uh, about color with them, and then they would send clients our way as well. And it just was a beautiful synergy that looking back, I will never take for granted, even though I no longer live in that location, those guys will always have a special place in my heart. That's your coaching corner for today. And don't forget, if you want to continue the narrative or share your story about how networking has or has not worked out for you, let us know. Join us in the conversation on any of our socials. You'll find links to them in our show notes. We'd love to hear from you.